Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. Now, many of our listeners were very keen for me to introduce to this program our next guest because you know a lot about her. She is a health journalist and author. And uh, to her absolute credit, on her website, you can download an ebook um, absolutely free about her own coming to, well, coming to great health, uh, dealing with bad health and, and ill health. Uh, go to healthnotnews.com. Uh, we're going to talk about quite a bit over the next 40 minutes or thereabouts, the alarming number of holistic and naturopathic healers who are dying mysteriously, um, but also how the families of the victims are fighting back. We'll talk about that and much more besides. Remember, the website is healthnotnews.com. Delighted to welcome to the show, Erin Elizabeth. Erin, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well, Richie. Thank you. An honor to be here. Uh, the honor is ours. I know you're incredibly busy. It's been a well. It's been a mad few years, I suppose, but it's getting yes, it's getting so madder. Yes, even just the la- for me, just covering these stories the last ten months. That's all I've been since I began covering them, and it's been a mad ten months or almost a year for certain. Yes, I'm sure it has, and we'll come to that in a second. I can't not start though with the with a story we've covered pretty much most of last week and the week before. Uh, that's Andy Wakefield and Dell Bigtree's documentary Vaxxed, which was due to be at the Tribeca Film Festival this month. It was pulled. Robert De Niro got it in the neck from people. I thought a little bit unfairly. He has a family uh, as well, and we, we, we tend to demonise people without putting ourselves in their shoes. But it was very wrong of the Tribeca Festival to not show the film. I think it's had... A premiere, I think it's been shown. What have you made of all of that, Aaron? The way the system jumped straight in there and said you are not showing that film at a famous film festival. What did you think? Well, I didn't demonize De Niro because I figured with all the doctors who talk to me who get threats and then some of them end up, you know, so many ending up dead that I, I didn't I didn't want to demonize him because I understand, like you said, he has a family. I'd seen uh, Andy Wakefield out at Cal Jam, where we both were speakers two weeks be, uh, two weeks ago. So just before, just like a few days before this happened, where uh, Tribeca pulled it, and then I think Cinema Libre Studio picked it up. And I just, uh, I'm just hoping that because of what Tribeca's done, that somehow this will garner it more attention. That's it. Uh, that's all I can hope is uh, that we can uh, get it more attention. Though I saw in New York, it said they're almost sold out, and I was really hoping they'd be sold out with you know lines around the all in New York City, lines around the corner. So I just hope that uh, this picks up speed and people hear about it because they don't understand, they don't know. I think the majority, at least of Americans, don't even know about the CDC whistleblower right here in uh, Southeast United States. I mean, it's crazy. They don't they don't even realize that's happened or the, the fraud that the CDC top she, chief scientist admitted was um, committed. And I think that this film will get the word out there if people will just watch it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Just, yeah, he he should be a household name now, William Sampson, shouldn't he, in the United States? If we lived in a fair world, Aaron, well, first of all, if we did, we wouldn't be talking, obviously. We'd be doing something else. But we, right. we, 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 he should be a household name, somebody with that information. Oh, yeah. I just can't believe it was just unbelievable how the kind of like this, the doctor stories that the media just really squashed that and uh it was it was really uh really disappointing and he and I got to talk a little bit there about between my stories and his film just how um you know sad it was but at that point he thought he was still Tribeca was still going to be um showing it so hopefully I really truly believe I mean I believe it's all connected really so I I hope that the film gets the exposure it needs and that millions see it and that I hope Thompson does become a household name. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it will do as well. I think those of us that are lucky enough to have an audience, um, healthnotnews.com has a huge audience. We've got an audience here. Um, yeah. Alex Jones has got an audience. David Icke has got an absolutely mega audience. And I think we're going to be getting the film. Uh, pretty soon and it'll be nice to watch it so that you can review it properly and then you know tell people that you must go and see it so um it's all good there's no such thing as bad publicity you you know that as well as anybody else folks Aaron Elizabeth is on the line to us it's uh, 13 minutes past the hour um hundreds of tweets are coming in I'll get to as many of them as I possibly can but I, I don't want to get in the way of Aaron because we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the system whether it's big pharma 
whether it's the hidden hand, where it's agents of the deep state who have been targeting men and women who have been investigating cures, remedies, um, alternative natural medicines that can deal with things as dreadful as cancer and, well, anything you can really uh, think of. You know what, Aaron, when I first heard the doctors were going missing, because I came out of the mainstream media, I've still got that in me. I've still got that in me. I've still got that scepticism. Sure. And I, you know, I thought, yeah, well, you know, things happen, bizarre things happen. But then I'm following you on Health Not News. I'm following uh, Adams. I, I'm obviously, you know, connected with, with, with David. So David is telling me, David, like I said, Richie, did you see this? Did you see that? And yeah. I didn't. And then I'm thinking, oh, my God, they're killing. They are targeting men and women, learned men and women who are trying to get information out to people that can make a huge difference to their lives but it's obviously going to destroy um, the big pharmaceutical companies. They're killing them. Now, for our listeners who've not heard this before or don't understand this, give it to them, Aaron. Tell them what's been happening. Sure. Well, it started really for me um, on June 19th of last year with Dr. Bradstreet. And uh, my better half of seven years is Dr. Mercola. So he's, you know, a holistic doctor and is um, a lot knew a lot of these doctors. And through him or even without him, I knew some of them as well. So when I'd found out that he was found dead in a river with a gunshot wound, and I won't go through each one, but I'll just, just start with just that one just quickly and summarize it quickly. But We um, have time now, by the way. We've got up to just, just before the top of the earth. You take all the time you want. Okay, yes. So when I, thank you. When I found out um, Dr. Bradstreet had been found dead in a uh, river with a gunshot wound to his chest, um, I just thought that was so unusual. And I actually don't think I'd ever met him, met n- numerous other doctors, unfortunately, who were found dead. And some of them were even close friends. But um, with him still, just from what I knew about him and our close mutual friends and colleagues, it just didn't make sense. So I, I didn't write about it, though. I just thought I, I didn't like seeing the rumors out there. And then, of course, mainstream uh, Washington Post, Forbes were calling him, you know, some of those publications were calling him a quack and just horrible things about a man who was just found dead and the case still open and they'd set up suicide, but it hadn't been ruled suicide and it still hasn't officially. But then within that same weekend, because being in this connected in this whole world, I get a call from a friend who worked for a holistic doctor, uh, Hedendahl. He was a a DC uh, PhD, so chiropractor and PhD from Harvard in nutrition in South in South Florida. And she goes, Oh my gosh, you know, she, she worked there and she was my friend. And she says, do you know, Bruce was just found dead. And this is just like 24 hours after I heard about Dr. Bradstreet. Then I heard about a third one who was only 33 years old, um, Dr. Baron Holt, also here in Florida. I mean, literally, these they were just one was up the road, one was down the road, so close by. So many have been at the beginning were here in Florida. And then I think that's when I decided to do my first story. And I didn't put uh, anybody else's name in it except Dr. Bradstreet, because I wasn't sure if everybody, even though I saw like the obituary out on one, but I, I, back then I, I didn't write, I wrote about organic pumpkin pie, health nut news. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't ever intended that it would take this turn. So, um, yeah, just as I think about it out loud here, I just, I kind of wrote just about Dr. Bradstreet, but I said there was another doctor and I didn't want to name that doctor. Well, then everybody wanted to know who that doctor was and, uh, no, no health sites had written about it. There was already a memorial page set up about Dr. Bradstreet. And so then Dr. Teresa Sievers was found murdered. And we had many mutual friends um, between us and her. And then it just kept, it just was like a, the domino effect uh, where we had Mitch Gaynor, Nick Gonzalez, uh, both of whom we knew, talked to on the phone, met in person. And it, it just, it didn't stop. We had two here locally that you could, you know, a stone's throw away, you could ride your bicycle to either one of their homes both in strange uh, circumstances. One about my age, she was very young. So uh, many are still unsolved and some of the families have now hired their own investigators and are working to to solve the deaths uh, themselves, uh, figure it out because we can't seem to get the feds interested. We've had a couple holistic doctors write certified letters to the FBI asking if they would at least look into an investigation or are they investigating, but they get no answer or response. And, uh, yeah, it's it's really it's just really sad. But just from, uh, you know, from whether murders, many suicides, many doctors found dead in woods, especially a lot of those with uh, just where people say they would never take their own lives or uh, yeah, found yeah, yeah. Like suicides on their properties. Uh, so so yeah. you so you put your you put your trench coat on then. And I'm not trying to make light of this or belittle it at all. I've, I've read the articles. 
um, in, in research and you coming on. Of course, I've known about health, not news for a long time anyway. But I, I read the articles. They're very well written articles. And they're very, they're very fair. You're obviously a very good writer anyway. And you're not going to write and you're not going to make claims that you can't substantiate. What you do very well is you ask questions. Um, so you put your trench coat on, you put the old Lieutenant Columbo hat on and you think, yeah. what connects these people? What connects these people, these relatively young men and women who are dying suddenly in sometimes unexplained ways? And this is where it starts to get, I mean, the world should know that this is going on. Let's start, let's start talking about the connections then between these men and women. Sure. Well, of course, the one that's kind of gone a bit viral is the GC map, which definitely Dr. Bradstreet admittedly used and uh, with his patients and even traveled overseas once, of course, the government here made it illegal uh, in the U.S. Uh, but I don't, from talking with some of the other doctors, immediate family members, their spouses, I think that's, I, I don't, I wish, I wish it was an easy answer. Oh, it's GC math and that's it. Yeah. But there are other doctor uh, uh, spouses that I have um, have met in person and talked with, and they said, "Yeah, he or she didn't didn't use that, or at least they don't know that they use that." Uh, and they may have used other things, but I think it's I don't think it's just GC math. I don't think there's just one smoking gun. I think that they were all extraordinary doctors first and foremost. They were all really extraordinary. That's one thing I see that these were some of the top. I mean just just top tier doctors uh, at helping people, especially with cancer, autism, like, you know, the first one, Dr. Bradstreet and all the other, almost all the other ones. Um, and another thing is a lot of them, well, they're all outspoken. A lot were outspoken about uh, vaccines. And another component is cannabis oil. I mean, I've said this publicly at, at a couple t- large talks that I've done. Uh, I've had some of their patients write me and say, hey, you know, I had stage four cancer. I'm already in my 70s. And or was at the time. Now I'm, you know, in my 80s. And this doctor, um, Dr. Bradstreet, was one of them. Had them do a strict regimen with cannabis oil, and uh, I, where it was legal in the state where the patient lived, they could do that legally, and they they are uh, in remission now for several years. So That's brilliant, I don't it? think even with Dr. Bradstreet, who admittedly used GC math, I think there's more than one component, and I I don't know. Uh, besides being outspoken, all uh, many being outspoken about vaccines, that's another huge thing since we were just talking about vaxxed. Uh, that's another common thread. And uh, some of them also doing not just treating patients, but doing in-depth research. Even some, which I had never covered anything except doctors until recently because we had a just a, a – uh, a spate of cancer researchers who were found dead, uh, one there in the UK found in a, a rubber suit and a hanging from a tree, just very strange. Uh, Incredibly death. bizarre that. Yeah, with it, with some of the, with some of the cancer researchers. So a lot of them were digging. They were researchers as well. And, and many doctors too. And I don't just mean PhDs, but we have MDs or MDs with other degrees who were doing research. So I don't know what they were finding, but Dr. Bradstreet had definitely announced publicly that he had some big news to uh, that he was going to announce. So um, I don't know. Can I ask you to speculate on something, Aaron? And, sure. and you can only speculate on this. What is it, do you think, that has started so many doctors, so many GPs, so many MDs? Why have so many of them in the last few years begun to turn away from the, the, the dogma, the training that they had to, to look past the the books that they were given when they were at uni and to look at natural uh, remedies natural cures what has prompted that is, is there i mean that's it's probably a 64 million dollar question i can't put a finger on it why so many so suddenly started to become so open minded have you any anything you can you can add to that what do you think well i think that uh part of it could be that they even now mainstream, even mainstream, like NPR here in the U.S. PBS is saying that um, unfortunately chemotherapy doesn't necessarily help you live longer or a better life. So I mean, they, when they put headlines out like that, I think that it's just it's it's people are the, the mainstream is even admitting that these therapies, conventional therapies don't work. And they're seeing that they don't work. These doctors are treating cancer day in and day out, many of them. 
even some who were just uh, like Dr. Hedendahl, if he's uh, a, a DC, but he's also got a PhD in nutrition, his patients have cancer. And there, more and more of these doctors are realizing, uh, and especially the conventionally trained MDs, wow, this, this isn't working. The chemotherapy isn't working. I think even the mainstream is waking up to that. So they have to find something that works to help their patients, especially as the cancer rates rise in the U.S. Even mainstream admits that. So to have that, a conscience, I suppose. To, we're, there's obviously a lot of tweets coming in. I'll just read a few of them. I'll tell sure. you what, Aaron, uh, Robert De Niro is not getting much love from our listeners, uh, even though you didn't criticise him. I didn't either. I said, you know, walk a mile in somebody's shoes before you criticise him. But Alex says, De Niro does, Alex Benjamin on Twitter, De Niro does deserve criticism. His £150 million pounds or dollars net worth won't help his son. Exposing vaccines by supporting Wakefield would have done. But you know, Alex, we don't know what was said to uh, De Niro or what sort of pressure he might have been put under. We're all very brave, I think. I think we've got a brave woman on the line. We'll talk about that uh, shortly. But it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's different when they come to you and they put pressure on you and they squeeze your family and your friends you know, it's 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 easy, but I hear I hear you loud and clear. And there's, there's been a number of those actually. Uh, Wayne was the same. Uh, people get angry with that action, then they have the right to attack him, though it's not necessary. His karma is his son, and that's a bit harsh. That uh, JP is in Manchester, where I'm broadcasting from. CDC admits cannabis kills cancer cells, whereas the doctors suicided because of the study of GCMAF, the human protein that stops uh, cancer. Uh, asked JP. Now we talk about cannabis oil, Aaron, and you talked about the mainstream media. I interviewed a lady from Liverpool four or five or six weeks ago who was very reluctant to get into talking about big pharmaceutical companies and cures for cancer. She didn't want to do that. She wasn't interested in me or in David Icke or in anybody else, but she said she'd come on the programme. She was lovely and she came on and she talked about having stage four cancer was very bad. She eliminated sugar from her diet um, eating all, uh, eating a lot of raw foods, and then began to uh, to take the oil, and she's doing well. She was only given a couple of months to live, and that was a yeah. couple of years ago. Wow! And that got into the British tabloid newspapers, Aaron. It made it into uh, the the Liverpool Echo, and it made it into the the uh, the Daily Mail, which is Britain's most popular tabloid. So, yeah, there's a lot of truth to what you're saying about people are getting places with this information. You have a lot to do with that, to be fair to you, and healthnutnews.com and, and others. But that's really positive, that. Well, yeah, I'm, I, and it's, at, at first, I think it, I, I'm the first to admit that it was really, it got depressing after a while. I mean, it was summer and supposed to be uh, kind of a, a happy, sunny, good weather time when this all began. But I think I just was indoors. I was nursing a broken foot, really, but I don't know if even if that hadn't happened, if I, you know, because I was kind of stuck having to keep my feet up for a while, that I really had the time to just delve into the to the stories. And I know some people say, "Oh, look, you you did this on purpose. The story's on purpose, or whatever." But obviously, I, like I always say, it was unintended because I didn't know that once I wrote about one that um, and perhaps another that I was waiting for the details of what happened and that then it would just continue and, uh, and escalate. And even that second doctor, Hedendahl, his, a uh, couple of his family members, loved ones have gone on TV saying they're still demanding answers. So brilliant. And you, so I, and you mentioned they've hired private investigators. This is important as well. Uh, yes, not, uh, well, there's Dr. Bradstreet and then, um, another one had just, uh, contacted me and now I, it's, there's so many <laughs> Richie, sometimes it gets crazy with over 30 and I'm trying to remember who else just said they'd, They'd contacted one. I I suspect some have and haven't told me, but un, unfortunately, some will just take the word of the local sheriff who will, and no offense to any small town sheriffs. I mean, there are a lot of awesome ones out there, but that's where we really wonder what's going on. Like with Mitch Gaynor, how was that called? A man just had a, a book coming out, being reviewed. He was friends with Dr. Oz, been on there twice, just been on RT News, which is interesting. Yeah. And uh, on these, some of these, uh, a little bit uh, controversial shows and then he's found dead. But that I think some families, uh, even with the young woman I said who was about my age, I don't know that they did autopsies. And uh, that, well, they had to, I'm sure they had to with him. Well, they just, because it was, they said it was alleged, well, not alleged, they ruled it a suicide. But then there are other ones where uh, the doctors are found dead and like 
what I love about um, Nick Gonzalez's wife, Mary Beth, who I had the honor to meet, is that she said, no, I, he was maybe the eighth doctor to die. And she said, like some of the earlier on ones where they may have not done an autopsy and now cremation is so common. She said, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm going to do an autopsy. I want to find out. They said, no, nah, it's a heart attack. He's in his 60s. She said, no. We're in his it. 60s. Wow. I know, but oh yes, so many that they said were. I think yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. one had a, allegedly had a massive heart attack at forty-one, and it was in perfect health and training for a, a for a, uh, a, I think a half uh, tri triathlon. Like a, I think wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So with Nick Gonzalez's wife Mary Beth, she insisted on it, and then she even posted publicly, which I really appreciated because she wasn't afraid and said, "Hey." The autopsy shows the heart, it, despite the initial belief of heart attack, it doesn't appear to be a heart attack whatsoever. No problem with the heart. So you have to wonder then what, they still have not determined the cause of death with, uh, with him or with some other doctors who I can't really say. Some of the families are more private than others. But um, That's outrageous, Aaron. I'm going to read some tweets. That's outrageous. 29 minutes past the air. We've got Aaron for another 15 to 20 minutes. Time is flying. Colm says, in fairness to Robert De Niro, he isn't dumb. Once he mentioned it, he knew whether it aired or not, Vaxxed would get the big publicity. That might be true as well, Colm. Jane tweets, uh, hi Jane, doctors must be sick to keep on prescribing drugs and patients keep on getting sicker. I'm amazed they take so long uh, to wake up. Uh, Funk Soul says on Twitter, we need to treat our bodies as a whole and not just symptoms. We need to be our own health uh, detectives. Uh, Wayne says, any intelligent person will turn away from battlefield medicine to what was holistic natural and intelligent uh, medicine uh, loads of emails as well i'm not going to get to all of these folks uh, because there's um there's a uh, quite a bit i want to get through between now and uh, uh, the end of the program before aaron uh, departs to uh, go back to work but i do want to mention this to you aaron you know i mean that must have been very nerve-wracking what you were discovering because it's personal for you because um you're you know, because you're 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 very obviously very well known through healthnotnews.com, it's known that your partner is Dr. Joseph Mercola. And that has got to be a concern for you. Yes, it is. Uh it's definitely is. I worry about him being just you know, one of the I suppose more uh well known holistic doctors in the world. So that that is uh frightening and then I'm writing about it, which again this was never intended to that this would turn into any kind of series and uh, it's it's horrible that it did. But uh yeah it's it's very concerning and I just I, I tell people though, like when I, I spoke at a recent event, there were a couple three thousand holistic doctors there at this event where Dr. Wakefield was speaking as well. And I said we can't live in fear though. So to any doctors, practitioners or people just that maybe are open and t openly talking about holistic medicine to their friends and family that we, we, we can't live in fear. We decided, you know, something can happen any of the day, any day of the week to anyone. So we just chose to be, be cautious, but uh, we weren't, I, I wasn't going to be silent. So I was just going to keep speaking out about it. I guess it's just my nature. So. And it's a great name as well, Aaron, when it comes to standing up against tyranny. Um, obviously I'm thinking Brockovich, of course, but it's yeah. uh, it's absolutely right and it's vital. It's vital. It's 29 minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, Des asks this, this is a good question on Twitter, why, why are all heart attacks described as massive? They are, oh. aren't they? <laughs> that's a good question. That's, that's a, yeah, that's a great point they have. Sure. Yeah, I don't, that is, I, I wonder, yeah, because maybe that ma makes it sound more official or something. And uh, Dr. Kamir was only, Abdul Kamir was only 41. And, and, and even his best friend, uh, and this is just all off the top of my head. I have their pictures in front of me, but I don't even have the article. Uh, I could scroll down. But his friend was, uh, just they, these facts stick with me, uh, had been a friend since uh, college. They're fraternity brothers. So, you know, it's got to be at least like 20 years and was his patient and his best friend. And he said it doesn't add up about his clean diet, clean living. That's all he did. He was a holistic. And he just he didn't think it added up. That's what he said. And so many of these, even some of the uh, authorities were saying with a few of them, gosh, this doesn't add up. That was even in the paper. So even the authorities had questions on some of them. But we just don't understand why the feds didn't investigate. So when you have so many doctors uh, across the, the nation and even, you know, they're uh, in the UK as well. So it's yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. So really, I didn't go beyond that area. I I guess I was concentrating more on the national news here. And uh, yeah, it's uh 
you yeah. know, as, as I'm listening to you, we, we spent some time, my fiance and I, in Spain for a number of years, in fact. And while we were there, Aaron, we met all sorts of characters. I mm-hmm. mean, we met we met all sorts of characters. We met a man who, whom I won't name because he can be found on social media. Um, but he's um, I, I won't give him a name. But he came from a long line of military people in his family. And when we met him in Spain a few years ago, he was in his early, no, he's in his mid 50s, I would guess. When he was um, in his late teens, early 20s, he went to Angola back in the mid 1970s to basically work as a mercenary in the civil war in Angola. And they, they, they were mercenaries for hire, British soldiers who'd never seen any war, but they wanted to, to see war. And they went off to Angola and some of them got arrested. One of them was executed. And anyway, he got away with it and he went into private security. And we were having a chat with him one night at um, the bar that my fiance ran for a number of years. He said something terrifying to me. He was interested in the sorts of stories that you will read on healthnotnews.com and he was interested in September the 11th and, you know, the, 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 the other side of the mainstream media, what, what's really going on. Yeah. And he said to me one night, and I asked him about people getting disappeared. He said, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Richie, he said, this, this, this is the way it is. There are thousands of men around the world, American men, British men, Irish men, men from Northern Ireland, highly trained men who took part in various conflicts around the world, various um, insurrections and revolutions, got very well paid for it. These guys are heavily trained. He said thousands of them are working for themselves in the private sector now. And you know what I'm going to say, Aaron, don't you? He said, they're basically murderers for hire. Yep, yep. And when listening to you and reading your articles, I'm thinking, why wouldn't somebody connected to a major pharmaceutical company? Well, I mean, we're not, I doubt it's the CEO or, you know, it's the chief financial officer. But, 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 but those behind those guys say, well, you know, the, some of these doctors now starting to get a bit antsy they're starting to get a bit cheeky they're asking questions they're doing stuff let's make an example and when you think of the doctor who was found in a bondage suit hanging from a tree that sounded to me not only like it was like he was being punished for for speaking out and for writing articles and for investigating but it was also saying to other doctors not only will we kill you but we'll humiliate you as well afterwards oh yeah yeah that's that just seemed like a clear sign to me and i've had even ex, that's a great point. I've had ex, ex FBI agents contact me who have said that, look, this is, there are these men for hire. We've, yeah, and we've, of course, talked with security and things like that. But there are men for hire, like you said, Irishmen, uh, American men, wherever they are from. But yeah, for a price, they, this is what they do for a living. So, um, and some have, some experts have weighed in saying it's probably one person. It wouldn't be a group because it would then be out by now. If, you know, we're just, like you said, we're speculating. We don't, I have no proof of this, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a definite possibility. It's just so strange um, when I see these. And then when I, you know, I was banned for, this is real quick here, segue, but you're mentioning the pharmaceutical companies. I was banned from Facebook for three days for calling out uh, someone posting on Easter Sunday on my page on a, on a post about Gardasil. And this was on Facebook and he commented and said, go get your you know vaccines. They're safe and effective. And it was about Merck's Gardasil. And it turned out, I just, as I hovered over his you know name on the post, it showed that he was the, basically the director of adolescent vaccines at Merck. That's a huge, huge division. I mean, millions are getting the Gardasil vaccine or even outside the U.S., millions just in the U.S. And it's so strange that this top uh, executive at Merck would, Merck Pharmaceuticals would be posting on my page. So you just have to wonder. And then that I got banned for just mentioning it and calling him out and not breaking any community standards. So if they're going as far as to post on people's health sites. And it was really him. I did confirm that 100% before calling him out and then his profile disappeared altogether. I don't know if they found out at work, but you have to under, you have to wonder if they're on a holiday, um, you know, posting on my page. I wonder what some of the, uh, they're, they're upset. It's upsetting them. This is actually, it's, it's obviously getting to them. So You're right. It is. And more power to you. By the way, I, I, um, I owe Wayne an apology. Wayne wasn't suggesting that uh, there's any karma for Robert De Niro. Uh, I read that wrong. I put son at the end of that tweet. And he didn't mention son at all. Wayne, you have my uh, unreserved apologies. Uh, lots of listeners on um, Twitter. Uh, Sharon in Manchester. Haven't heard Aaron speak before. I do like her very much. I'm already a big fan of Dr. Mercola. That's lovely. And a couple of questions asking about what triggers you to do your work, Aaron. Now, by the way, health news 
healthnotnews.com. Get onto that website and generously there is a terrific ebook for download, uh, no charge whatsoever, which is essentially Aaron's story. And that kind of answers, well, I mean, you can answer it anyway, Aaron. Uh, what triggered you to do the work you do today? Where did it begin for you? Uh, I think just I'm adopted and having had health challenges since an early age, like just after birth, I was vaccine injured and not a great pregnancy to begin with for my birth mother. And uh, I think just lifelong health challenges that especially then I found out I was I was diagnosed with a positive uh, blood test with Lyme disease uh, just not even three years ago. So I especially then I decided I needed to start the site and help other people. The site is just two years old. But prior to that, I just, I think had, even though I'm, there weren't many people in my family who were really into natural health, but I just had kind of a, a real passion for it and knew that, like I said, with some of the allergies and the ch- health challenges I'd had for so many years that I knew that it helped. And then finally solved the mystery of what my challenge really was with the Lyme that I'd had so long. So that's, that's kind of what started it. But also there was part of me that does like solving mysteries, finding out about the Lyme, finding my birth parents who they, they, my birth mother lives in Europe and I found her and met her and a beautiful story. But I just, I, I think with the, that's what, what the start s- cited, I'm sorry, that we've got the lawn people here too. They're only here for 30. <laughs> it's all going on there today. No, they, they, they came right. I knew this was going to happen. They came right when this started. I thought, oh boy, I heard the truck pull up, but sorry, I hope you can hear That's me. That's fine. I, I, we can hear you really I, loud. Don't worry I, about I, it. To a little closet. So, so you can't hear the noise, um, but I can still hear them a little bit. But when I started the site, I think that my primary goal was just to get the word out, maybe on uh, the vaccines or the fluoride in the water, all that kind of stuff, just that to reach the masses, hopefully, with that kind of information. And then, of course, the uh, the doctor death started and it kind of went from there. But I realized as I cover the stories, it brings me, you know, it's 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 not enjoyable. Like I said, it can be even depressing t- talking to the families who are grieving. But on the other hand, I think I have to stay, we have to stay focused on bringing, my idea is bringing light to the subject, bringing shedding light on this, shedding light, getting the word out there, shedding light on what's happening, uncovering the mysteries, the darkness. So that's kind of my goal now. So I don't get uh, quite so sad when I talk about it. Uh, is no, you're very upbeat. You, you read very upbeat as well. Let me ask you this. Do, do you go along with David Icke's contention that the next three years are going to be very, very important in terms of the way this um, the way this paradigm, you know, goes, whether it gets even worse or whether it begins to get better. He thinks the next uh, three years are vital. What do you think? I Yeah, I would agree. Uh, we've, we've followed him for some time. And uh, yeah, I think he's I think he's right. I'm, it's really we're in very interesting times worldwide. I mean, what what's going to happen? And uh, yeah, I think that it's I, I would agree with that. I think that uh, we I just, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but I think those these next three years will be pretty. They're pretty going to be pretty hectic. By the way, Sharon says she's in Hurricane, West Virginia, not in Manchester. Uh, oh. So I, I stand corrected. Listeners all over the world, New Zealand, South Africa. I want to say hi to Lawrence in South Africa, who's listening as well. Listening to us on davidike.com. We're broadcasting, of course, on Fab Radio 2 in the great city of Manchester, England, on alternatecurrentradio.com as well. The tune in app, my own website. I want you to go to healthnutnews.com. Aaron Elizabeth is on uh, the show with us. Uh, she'll be with us for about another five minutes. Unfortunately, uh, time does fly, but it has been terrific having her on. This is all happening, folks, by the way. There isn't any conspiracy theory here. You know, men and women who have the courage and the conscience to uh, open their minds and to start to see the real picture about health and about medicine are being targeted by those who stand to lose a lot. And it isn't just money. That's another one, Aaron. I mean, you know, knowing David as long as I do, David says, of course, money plays a big part in it. But of course, it isn't just about money. It's about the manipulation of, of, of us on a cellular level, on a DNA and, a, and on a biological level. It's about changing us, um, ultimately enslaving us through, through the manipulation of our bodies, using vaccinations, using Wi-Fi, using all of that. Is that something that um, you would be happy to go along with? Is it something that you, you're prepared to, um, to consider? How do you feel about that? 
Um, I think that, uh, yeah, that's it's and, and there was just a little noise there. I apologize. But I heard heard what you said. I think that, do I think that money is manipulating what's happening, like with the vaccination? No, I was and- just saying that money is, a, is obviously a very big part of it and protecting the, 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 the hegemony, I suppose, of the pharmaceutical companies. But also that a lot of it is down to the big gain for the for the cabal, for the elite. The big gain is to change us, to change us, to change us structurally to change our bodies, to change our DNA, our, our biological makeup, that that really is very important to them as well. Oh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's, I, I, I wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me one bit, let's say that, you know, I mean, like, there's always, like, like you said, you have the skeptic in you, there's always the skeptic in me, but oh, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And I think more so than two years ago, when I started the site, and now I'm just researching myself so much, yeah, that, that, uh, that would not surprise me that they do. They do want to change us, whether it's the vaccinations or the food, the water, everything. I mean, it's yeah, it's I think it's been and it's so crazy that I that people the, the majority, at least maybe the people are opening their eyes. But still, I think the majority of people don't get it. I mean, I, I can talk to people about even mercury in the fillings and people say, huh, what? What? Yeah, there's there's really mercury in our fillings. Are you sure mine are silver? You know, I mean, it's just so funny. So I don't think that people see the systematic is systematically what's happening um, with with all of those things. And yeah, I do think that there's a, a lot of merit to that. So I think they're no, David, it's I, good. I, I, Listen, just before we do um, say goodbye for for today, a lot of people are still asking me about precautions. They're saying, do you take precautions? You know, you and Dr. Mercola, as, be, as best as you can, do you take precautions? That's a really important question that. Um, you know, in light of what you've been saying and what you've been doing, are you are you serious about your safety? Yes, yes, we are serious about our safety. And on the other hand, like I said, we still want to live life, but we have definitely taken extra precautions and stepped it up with extra, much extra security. So yeah, and I mean, I'd state for the record, if anything happened to me too, um, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for him, but if anything happened to me, uh, if I were, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be of my own hand. So, you know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Really quite a, yeah. I haven't said that, but, um, yeah, we, we do take extra security precautions and have fortunately had some great, uh, security people that, uh, have con- since all this has begun that have contacted us. And even before that, we might have to take you know, a few measures, but now definitely stepped it up, especially having lost so many of our own friends. I mean, friends, even right here where we live uh, in either the county or the town or just one town away. So uh, holistic doctors, I mean, so yeah, we've stepped it up, especially when it's gotten so close to home just in the last few um, recent weeks. So, and maybe the last month. So. Just a very quick final question. Jane asks, does, um, does Aaron know what or, or who or what? I, I, it's what, does Aaron know what killed Andreas Moritz? Uh, Dr. Moritz, who wasn't covered in the uh, the stories, um, but I think let's see, he he wasn't. That was before the last. Like I said, I haven't even had time to go back beyond. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Beyond, but I do know that his that his name was uh, sent to me, and he's not included in the series. And uh, yeah, I think actually, I um, I feel like I'd had one of his own. Uh, I don't want to say for sure family members write me but he's on my list he's definitely on my list a very handsome guy and i've studied a little bit about him from before the last year this is this just started in june like i said june 19th yeah that's right then, richie we have like countless ones just the year before that including someone we knew and they didn't do an autopsy because they said gosh this had, we didn't know yet this hadn't started and they did, you know it was too, it's too and you, late. You, you must be getting inundated with correspondence from people who because i mean healthnutnews.com has a huge um, following, so you and it's global. So you must be getting people sending you messages saying, "Oh, you better check this out," or "What about this doctor?" Be- oh, yeah, yeah, you I, must be getting that all the time. Yeah, someone basically, all, I mean, a, a, like part time, just to help me with the emails. Yeah, just probably, and she might have been the one who got that email and then uh, had because I read about him in the already, and I don't, and I don't know that we know what happened yet with him. But yeah, oh yeah, especially doctors who. If it's if it's past the date, I mean, if it's just happened, then of course I'll research it. But then I have all the doctors that I have to research from before June of last year. So and and Doctor yeah. and Doctor Andreas Moritz would be amongst those. So yeah, it's uh it's so sad, and there are so many, and just families, and and I never contacted, reached out to any family members of the doctors. I will say that um they have all. 
the ones that have contacted me have all reached out to me. And, and I'm sure some aren't thrilled with the articles, but most have been pretty understanding because they want the ones who have contacted me, they want answers too. So, Listen, God speed to you and to everybody who works with you and Joseph Marcola, your, your partner. Folks, go to healthnutsnews.com. Uh, you'll often find Aaron's articles. You'll find them all over the internet. David shares them a lot on davidike.com forward slash headlines. It's very important work. Thanks uh, for coming on. Great to finally meet you. Um, you have an open door here. If there's anything you want to um, bring up, if there's any news breaking at any time uh, you want to get out there, uh, do do stay in touch here and get in touch with us straight away and we'll get you back on the programme whenever you want. Enjoy Hi. chatting with you. It's a difficult subject. It's horrible. But uh, thankfully, you know, thankfully it's out there. People are understanding that it's happening and, and when they do understand that, well, they can take action. A real pleasure to have you on today. Thank you. It was an honor, Richie. It does go by quickly. It was an honor to talk with you. You're you're awesome. So I'll keep listening to your show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Thank Aaron. You. Bye. Bye for now. May the road rise with you, as we say uh, in Ireland. Aaron Elizabeth on the line to us there from the southeast coast, uh, the southeastern seaboard of uh, the United States.